book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 13 says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Um, I'm going to make this video here really, really quickly, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I know some of you have a real hard time with that. You're just so quick to get your pitchforks together and your flaming torches and try to burn the heretic. You know, oh, brother, you're such a, you're, I appreciate some of what you've done, but you're really going off the deep end and blah, blah, blah. You need to just be quiet. You need to erase this video and stuff. Why don't you just shut up and just listen to me for a minute, okay? I'm going to be a little bit blunt and brutal with this. No one in the Bible has ever been saved by faith alone. Oh, here's, here's the standard, okay? I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Lutheran. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not an Episcopalian or a Methodist or whatever other man-made denomination is out there. I am a King James Bible-believing Christian. Okay? And if you go back before the King James Bible is translated, I would have used whatever equivalent in my native tongue would have been there or in whatever other language would have been available. Okay? So don't try to do that either. little fun game or whatever. But as a Bible-believing Christian, I will base my speech and my language upon this book. So do you out there that say people have always been, sa been saved by faith alone or we're saved by faith alone today? Okay, I'm going to give you a thousand dollar challenge. All right, thousand dollars to the first person that can put the scripture from the King James Bible in the comments below that says faith alone. Show it to me from the King James Bible. Show it to me. Okay. That's the issue. That's what I was trying to say with this study here where I showed these five solas, okay? People are taking the five solas and making them into the same level of authority as Scripture. That's Catholic. That's a Catholic practice. Divine tradition is elevated above Scripture. That's why I say Reformed theologian people, a lot of times in many ways, are just nothing more than Catholics. I mean, what are you doing when you're reforming Catholicism? You're making a new branch of Catholicism. You say, well, the King James Bible was translated by Protestants. No, you're wrong. The King James Bible was translated by the Holy Spirit of God. God's Holy Spirit gave us this book. It wasn't the 47 men, or the 54, if you go back to the very beginning, the guys that were Anglican and, and, and Puritan and stuff like this. They weren't the ones that gave us this book. They didn't just sit down and write out this book and say, I think I, I, th I like it this way. I kind of prefer it that way. God was the one that inspired this book. Okay? And again, don't try to put a little double inspiration thing on me. I don't teach double inspiration that it was re-inspired in 1604 to 1611. I don't teach that. It was inspired through preservation. Right? God told the men in 1604 to 1611 what to write down. That's why this is God's book. And the others are not. Very simple. And God wrote this book without the words faith alone. That doesn't appear anywhere in Scripture except for James chapter 2, verse 17, which says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Which just proves the theory of these faith alone heretics. All right? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Right there. I'm trying to get this thing here on camera. For by grace are ye saved through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay? When you're saying faith alone, you're saying something that does not appear in the King James Bible. Somebody says, how are you saved? I'm saved by grace through faith. That's scriptural. All right? By grace through faith. And what I'm saying, why I get so worked up about this thing is because these people come along and they say, it's just belief. It's just a belief. I just believe that I'm saved, therefore I am. Well, I believe that I'm a, a, a grape-flavored lollipop, therefore I must be. No. No, 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 no. Okay? Belief is part of the gospel. Certainly. Absolutely. Sure. But just saying, oh, it's just this, I just believe that I'm saved. And it's by faith alone. Faith alone does not appear in Scripture. Right? Understand that. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Salvation right now, God's grace connected with faith on my part. Faith to put my, 
I have to put my faith in something that I can't see. Jesus Christ doesn't come to me and say, do you believe that I died on the cross? See, here's my hands. See the hole there? Look, here's my side here. You see that? You see? He doesn't do that. I have to put my faith in something that I can't see. That's there. But I'm going to tell you right now, nobody in the Bible has ever been saved by faith alone. God's grace has to be there. God's grace is dispensed in different ways down through the ages, down through the different dispensations. Again, our speech is to be defined by the book. That's what I advocate, and I'm called a heretic for it. You know, I advocate returning back to the Bible way of no church buildings. There are no church buildings in the entire Bible for Christians. Okay, well, what about the Jewish Old Testament synagogue? Yeah, how'd that turn out? Condemned in Acts chapter 7 by Stephen, and they killed him for it. Just like a lot of you would like to kill me right now. You see? Your church buildings are pagan. Totally, completely pagan. They come from Roman Catholicism. More on that in another video coming up soon. Stay tuned. I advocate going back to the Bible, returning to Scripture, and I get called a heretic for it. I say, there is no such thing as faith alone. In the King James Bible, oh, you stinking heretic, you. How dare you? You're really getting messed up. You're this, you're that. Because I tell you to go by the words of God, I'm called a heretic for that? Oh, Brother Brian, I've supported your ministry, but you're really going off the... Why am I going off the deep end? Because I tell you to return to the Scriptures? And the Scripture right here is to be your final authority? But let me just... Let me talk about this thing of this faith alone thing. Because you get a heretic like Edward Fenninger. Okay, and this guy is, he is a devil in the flesh. All right, mister, I got saved as a very young child in the Catholic Church. And I just simply believe. You don't even, you don't even pray in his little warped mind. You don't even need to call to the Lord and say, God, please save me. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh, no, you don't need to do that. You just walk around and say, I'm a Christian, I believe. You know, but, but I believe in Jesus. I've, I've put my faith in Jesus, but I'm not saved, you see, because I can say I've had a changed life after my salvation. So that disqualifies me from being saved. Do you see how warped it is? You know, salvation in that system is you have to believe and then nothing changes. Or you, at least if some things change, you just can't say that there has to be a change after your salvation. Because that's a false gospel. Well, if it's just belief, then... You just believe, and then whatever you do from then on, well, hey, you're in. See? It's satanic. And this stinking Satanist is coming around, this, this little minister of Satan. And I'm thankful that he doesn't have that many subscribers. He's not poisoning too many people's minds. But I see so many people that used to be friends of the ministry here, and now they just listen to this guy, and he's just, I mean, it's like, it's like watching paint dry listening to this guy. You know? I mean, just blah, 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 monotone, you know, devils. And, you know, and I've, I've struggled over the years. Why can't this guy see this? And it's like, duh, he's lost. He's completely lost. He's not born again. I mean, remember, his salvation came as a young child, very young child in the Catholic Church. Out of his own profession. I have the video here on YouTube. He's, he's lost. I mean, good night. And yet there's so many people, and they'll listen to this guy, and he just drags on and on and on and on and on and and he makes this whole thing that if you say that there's a changed life after your salvation, then you're teaching work salvation. That's a false gospel. And I see these people that used to stand by me. And I used to recommend their ministries. And now it's like, Brother Brian, I just, I'm sorry to see you going this way. And I, I'm praying for you, brother. I think it's things are going bad. And, and I'm going, okay, um, I'm still preaching the same way I've always preached. What do you mean things are starting to go downhill? You know? They're listening to this Satanist. I'll go over to his channel and check it out. And it's like, yep, there they are in the comments. Oh, brother, you're doing such a good job. I just, I hope that Brian will turn from his wickedness and stuff like this. I pray that God drops me dead if I ever go to preach in the kind of satanic gospel that Ed Fenninger preaches. And it was so interesting. Way back when, when Martin Richling was coming out making a big stink and he was attacking me right around the time we were moving here to Maine. And he was attacking me. And uh, Ed Fenninger came out in defense of the guy. And a bunch of the brethren were going, what? What are you talking about here? And it was like, oh, well, uh, you know, and he kind of backed off a little bit. Now he's preaching the same thing that Martin Richling preached. Prayer is a work. If you pray to be saved, that's a false gospel. The Romans road to hell, actually. It's not the Romans road to salvation. It's Romans road to hell. 
Let me demonstrate a couple things for you here, okay? Salvation by faith alone, okay? No, it's by God's grace through our faith in what he did on the cross. It's never been by faith alone, and it will never be by faith alone. All right? I talked about this in the last study on Revelation chapter 12, the expository study there. Time of Jacob's trouble. Let's talk about this, because I already showed you Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It's by God's grace, by grace through faith. If you want to say about the thing of faith there in salvation, then you quote scripture, you know. I know that's a new concept to some of the people out there, you know. I mean, let your speech come from the Word of God instead of your own thoughts and the, and the words of Martin Luther or some other heretic from back then that just tried to reform Catholicism. That's why they have Luther's Catechism and, and the, the Book of Discipline within the Methodist system and, and all this other extra-biblical stuff, you know. I mean, you can be a Catholic and take your catechism or you can be a Lutheran and take your catechism, you know. But... Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, and the, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works. And yet I see this satanic heretic, Ed Fakinger, and he comes out and he says, it's by faith alone. It's always been by faith alone. It's always going to be by faith alone. Faith alone, those words don't even appear in Scripture. <laughs> That's why you compare Scripture with Scripture. Revelation 14, verse 12. Revelation 12, verse 17, with James chapter 2. That's why you see, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Compare Scripture with Scripture. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, when you see, if you're sinning willfully after that, you've received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You have people in the time of Jacob's trouble there that if they take the mark of the beast, I don't care what your profession of faith is, you are not saved. And you have, again, these guys magically, they, you know, uh, oh, they're, you know, people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble, they won't be able to take the mark of the beast. Well, then you make God a liar. You know more than God does, apparently, because the Bible says in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, it says there that if any man takes the mark, yes, they will be capable, not only capable, they will, the people that are saved are going to take that mark and lose it in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what Hebrews is talking about. It's a little bit irritating to me. It's just, it's insanity. But uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Salvation is by grace alone. You know, this one guy, you know, this uh, Richard Bennett or whatever, this papist, you know, he's, he's a reformed papist now. And, you know, and he comes on this uh, Berean beacon or something like it's called. As by grace alone, through faith alone, in the word of... You know, it's, oh, shut up. You know, let's just turn to the scriptures and read the Bible, okay? Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on, his, on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? Why are they inheriting the kingdom? Verse 35, For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then verses 41 through 46, he says basically the reverse and condemns them to hell. Where was faith alone? Where was faith even mentioned? It was works. Pure works at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Turn in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11.
I put up with a lot from some of the brethren. I get kicked around and spit on and all kinds of stuff. But you know what? Sometimes it makes me a little bit mad. And I have to come out and I have to rebuke some people. And that's what I'm doing right now. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Will the people in the end of the time of Jacob's trouble be able to see God and understand that God is real? Yes. They're looking directly at Jesus Christ sitting on the throne in Jerusalem in Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations. How can you have faith? They're not walking by faith. It's sight. The Jews require a sign. They're going to be giving them. That's what the book of Revelation and Daniel are all about. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Do His commandments? Wait, where's the testimony of Jesus? It's not there. Where's justified by faith alone, through grace alone? Oh, that's not there either. They do His commandments so that they may have right to the tree of life. Do I need the tree of life? No, I'm washed in the blood. I'm God's purchased possession. You see? Compare Scripture with Scripture. See, Abraham was justified by faith. He had faith alone. Cute, real cute. Romans chapter 4. You know, I really wish somebody could find out what this... Uh, I mean, it wouldn't matter, but I wish I could find out what somebody, you know, the, somebody could find out what this Ed Faking or this little jerk, you know, um, sissy that he is. Uh, I'd, I'd like somebody to find out what this guy's little alternative channel, he's blocked and banned from my site, but, you know, he just, you know, these guys, they keep making new channels and coming back in. Get a life, man. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Get a life. You know? Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay? And you can read down through there. Again, this is not going to be a big study. Abraham was justified by faith. Um, was it? What kind of faith was it? For you Baptists out there, non-dispensational heretic Baptists that you are, he was justified by faith because he looked forward to the cross. <laughs> You're an idiot. I mean, there's no nice way for me to say it. You are an idiot. I-D-I-O-T. Idiot. Okay? If you believe this thing, if you've never heard the truth, then I apologize. You can watch my whole study that I did on the thing of looking forward to the cross to be saved. Um, that's ridiculous. The disciples, right there, with Jesus, and they're going, we don't understand. You know, Jesus is like, um, he's signifying what kind of death he's going to die, and they're going, no, I don't, I don't, you know, understand. He right, He dies, raises from the dead, and he's walking along, and he's talking to his disciples, and they're going, we still don't get it. <laughs> they were not saved by looking forward to the cross. That is a satanic heresy, right? Nobody was saved in the Old Testament by looking forward to the cross. The faith that Abraham had was that God himself would provide a lamb for the sacrifice. But he, if you had gone back to Abraham and said, hey, isn't that something that Jesus taught on the cross to pay for your sins? Abraham would have gone, who, uh, what now? Huh? What? Who? Who? What? You'd had to explain to Abraham what was going to happen. The faith that Abraham had was God told him to do a work. Take your son, your beloved son there, your only son, Isaac, take him and sacrifice him. He didn't say, the just shall live by faith. <laughs> Just believe, only believe. You know, believe that Jesus died for your sins. Oh, that's right, he hasn't yet. You know, I mean, these people are mental. Do you understand this? 
mean, if you're saved, you're going, yeah, this doesn't make sense to me either. These people are crazy. But the lost people out there, hey, yeah, yeah, you're, just, you're, you're a heretic. You're a heretic. Let's, let's just burn the heretic and stuff like this. You know, and these idiots, they're doing what they can to try and shut this channel down. I've seen that. I come out with videos on these people, and all of a sudden, my whole account's just going crazy. I'm getting my website hacked and stuff, and I'm going, okay, I'm dealing with Bible-believing brethren. I don't think so. I'm dealing with goons. All right? Don't kid me, man. I know what you people are part of. My wife came from the spook world before she got saved. I thank the Lord for that. She adds her input now and she says, yeah, look at this. This guy's got administrator properties, or uh, not properties, but he's got administrator privileges. He's getting into your channel. He's doing things, messing with settings and stuff like that. People violate and all kinds of stuff on YouTube. Able to post comments and you go to one of their channel and everything's hidden and stuff. And they just have like this little weak channel and yet they're coming in messing with stuff. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Abraham was told to do something, and when he did that, he said, I believe God himself is going to provide a lamb for the sacrifice. But he didn't just say, well, God's going to provide. I mean, he's, you know, Jesus is going to die on the cross to pay for our sins, so you know, I'm just going to put my faith in that. No, God told him to do something. All right, And he had that knife, and he was about ready to plunge it into his son's heart, and the Lord said, stop. He had action. He had things that he had to do. But in that, he was having faith saying, I know that God is going to save. He's going to do something here. He's going to stop this from happening. He promised me that my seed would be great. And here's my seed laying right here. This is the boy that's Isaac, you know. This is my son, my only son. I'm too old to have more sons, you know. I mean, that, that God will give this promise to and things. God's going to do something. That's where the faith came in at. Abraham's being justified by faith was not the same faith that we have today in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. God's grace saves us today through our faith in what he did. It's not of ourselves. It's not of our works. And I keep going on and on and on. Salvation has never been by faith alone. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. <laughs> you know? All you people out there, oh, you're such a heretic, you're such a stinking heretic, blah, 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 blah. Quit running your mouth, okay? Put your money where your mouth is. Put down in the comments there the verse of Scripture in the King James Bible that says, Faith alone, those words side by side in the verse of the King James Bible, Faith alone, I'll send you $1,000, okay? Simple. Until then, shut your mouth, I'm not a heretic. Some of you people. Oh, but I've been watching Ed Fenninger's video. Let me give you a little bit of advice. You might want to listen to people that actually are genuinely saved and not Ed Fenninger or some of these other guys that say that I'm teaching a false gospel and things like this. Steven Anderson. You might want to actually avoid them people so I can listen to them. Okay, listen to them. And they're going to screw up your head. They're going to get in there and they're going to put all kinds of questions and doubts. And, oh, but... Well, yeah, but maybe there isn't repentance. and Maybe we, we've been preaching work, salvation, and, oh, and all this other stuff. I remember when this whole Martin Richling debacle was going on. He was a Jesuit, turned out. Uh, D Eric John Phelps knew him. And uh, actually was, you know, he told me, he said, yeah, he said he was a Jesuit. Martin Richling. Came after me personally a number of years ago, back when, like I said, when I was moving to Maine. Right around that time there. And uh, he really came out and attacked me. And, and he's, his whole website's gone now. Uh, his work came to nothing. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that the heretic is gone. But uh, this guy came out and, and, I mean, he was attacking and just, you know, prayer is a work and, and, you know, I challenge anybody and stuff. And he's going after all these different people saying, if you're saying that you need to pray, call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. This is, I mean, somehow uh, Martin Richling was a hyper dispensationalist. Um, and I, again, I get called that and I'm just going like, <laughs> do you people even know what hyper dispensationalism is? They don't. They don't study this stuff. Hyperdispensationalism, one more time, is that there are two bodies of Christ. Okay? Um, I have never taught that. I teach against that. Okay? Hyperdispensationalism, where's the book at? I have the book here somewhere. Cornelius Stam is the guy. Uh, I don't see it right now. It's here someplace. Sorry about that. It's some here, somewhere here. <laughs> Hyperdispensationalism is saying that Peter, James, John, you know, the disciples there, 
they were going to the Jews and they were preaching repentance to the Jews. Okay, early part of the book of Acts. The gospel of today is giving to Paul, given to Paul. That's true. But then they say that Paul was part of a different body of Christ, the church of the one body. Whereas the others, are, they continued to preach the gospel of repentance to the nation of Israel. So you have them preaching this other gospel and Paul preaching this gospel. And so Paul goes to the Gentiles and stuff like this and you have two different bodies of Christ. Uh, that's ridiculous. That's heresy. Okay, but how do you know? Well, I'll show you the verse of scripture here really quickly. The easiest one to debunk the whole system. Um, and they come up with all kinds of other stuff. Repent, or uh, Baptism is a sin. You shouldn't baptize people. Even though Paul said... You know, he baptized none of you, but, you know, I think it was Crispus and Gaius or something like that. Um, Paul did baptize people, but he was usually giving that duty to somebody else, saying, okay, he's preaching, and they're going, okay, you you go, you brothers out there, you go baptize the people and things. Uh, baptism, I don't say, is necessary for salvation today. Again, you got to look at transitional stuff. Acts chapter 2 is not the gospel for today. Okay? They were transitioning. The book of Acts is a transition book. All right? Hebrews is a transition book. Matthew is a transition book. Matthew coming from Old Testament to New Testament. Acts going from the gospel being presented to the Jews as a people to now Jews and Gentiles. Okay, Hebrews going from the church age into the time of Jacob's trouble. Romans chapter 16, if you want a real good verse uh, to debunk this thing of two bodies of Christ. Paul writing here, he says, uh, Romans 16, verse 7, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. So if the gospel is given to Paul, and nobody, in, nobody before Paul was saved uh, into that church of the one body thing, then, you know, uh, you know, why on earth would Paul be saying they were in Christ before me? He's making himself be part of the same body of Christ that was there before the gospel was revealed to him. So, hyper-dispensationalism is a circus without a tent, okay? Um, you can't get mixed up and, and try to go to the Gospels and, you know, things like that. The Gospels are there for us to learn from and, and everything else. We're to consent to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, First Timothy chapter 6. But, you have to be careful rightly dividing things. Fine, no problem. But, you know, again, you get this... Martin Richling heretic and he's coming out and he's hyper dispensational and the guy is saying that Romans chapter 10 that certain verses within Romans chapter 10 are not even for us doctrinally I mean the guy was a total wing nut right he's nuts okay and and again Ed Fenninger came out and he was defending Martin Richling and he's going along with it and stuff and now all of a sudden somehow he's now starting to say that prayer is a work and all this other stuff just like Richling once did why both part of the same system and it isn't biblical Christianity. So, if you're going to listen to the guy, and if you're going to come along and start saying, oh, I just, I think, Brother Brian, you're starting to go off the deep end. You know what you're doing? You're going to lost people. When Ed Fenninger is lost. You're going to this lost heretic, and you're listening to him, and he's putting doubts into your mind. And he is, uh, like the with the Corinthians, you know, um, you know, he says about, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from the gospel of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there would be some that, I'm getting the words mixed up here in my mind, some that would pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay? That's what's going on. Um, there are a lot of people that will preach Jesus Christ, but it's a perverted system of salvation. You know? And that's what they're doing. That's what this whole movement of faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone, scriptures alone, for the glory of God alone. That's what this whole system is about. They use that stuff and it sounds so good. It sounds real good. But they'll hold this thing up like it's some kind of a, it's, it's equal weight of scripture, you know. And then you, you listen to them people and you listen to these liars and they start to mess with your head. You know, um, I have to listen to a lot of this stuff because I'm a preacher and I, I debunk things and stuff like that. But I'll tell you right now, these guys can shake your faith. Why? There's devil spirits speaking through them, and those devil spirits are very intelligent. I remember hearing uh, many years ago, I was, I was doing my studies and things and before I got into ministry, um, and I remember uh, this one guy said, you know, there are people that will get messed up, and you'll hear it's a fleshly kind of a thing or whatever else. There will be some debate between brethren and stuff, you know, that, sure. 
But when you see people and they can just take the scriptures and just contort them and twist them and move them all around and you're going, but, but, uh, 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 it's, it's just, it's, you listen to the guy and it's just like, this is confusion. Is it, what? I, wait a second. That's not in the Bible, is it? And you're going, huh? You're dealing with devil spirits. You're dealing with somebody that's speaking through the power of a devil. Because the devil will twist the, the scriptures. He'll tweak things and change things. And all I'm advocating, if you say, well, you're the devil here, you're the devil. Um, well, then you're saying that me telling people to rely solely on the word of God to dictate how you, how you talk. You're saying that I'm the one with devils in me. Because the Bible does not say faith alone. Never once in the King James Bible. You say, well, I'll stand with the Reformers. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So, whatever. I uh, just want to say that. And, you know, um, there's a lot of people that I cared about, and they have since turned against me, stabbed me in the back, a bunch of Judas Iscariots that they are, and uh, I don't have time for them. Um, you say, well, you should work things out with your brethren. And I think some of them are brothers, you know, honestly. But they just get, they listen and they get, their minds just get so warped by it. people like Ed Fenninger. Ed Fenninger, by the way, uh, I tried to support him early on. But I remember way, 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 way back in 2009, he contacted me at one point and was trying to straighten me out on the dispensational stuff. And it's by faith alone and stuff. He was doing this way back then. And I said, it's always, it's just faith alone? Yes, it's just faith alone, you know. And, and I said, uh, what about the Millennial Kingdom? He said, what's well, obedience? I remember that. And I was just like, it's works. It's works in the millennial kingdom. Jesus is physically on the earth. How can you have faith? How can you believe in Jesus by faith? He's in Jerusalem for crying out loud. You know, it's works. It's pure works. Read Matthew chapter 5 through 7. That's the, the, for the, the millennial kingdom, the constitution of the millennium, essentially. There's no faith in it. None. You know, uh, it's obedience. It's not works, it's obedience. You know, and you're, and you're justified by faith and things that... Don't see, when you listen to the guy, you say, well, this, you know, I'm trying to understand how things, how he sees it. He's lost. Do you understand this? He is a lost man out of his own mouth, saved at a very young age, before the age of accountability. How can you have a knowledge that you're a sinner? And he's saved as a very young little boy in Sunday school at a Catholic church. That's his testimony. I could say a whole lot more, but I'm just going to quit for now. Um, you know, if you're going to come here onto this channel and you're going to spread heresy and you're going to try to waste my time and whatever, you're going to get blocked. Just as simple as that. Um, I have a ministry uh, primarily witnessing to the lost. Um, and well, I should say primarily teaching the Word of God to my brothers and sisters in Christ, but also witnessing to the lost. And I'm not going to have people coming in and bringing another gospel, a gospel where you're just saying things that have no basis in Scripture. and They don't appear anywhere in the King James Bible. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal with you. You're just going. You're out of here. Uh, if you're one of these saved brethren that that got your mind warped by listening to a faker uh, out there, well, okay. I'll see you in heaven. Um, you'll think differently there. Uh, you'll realize the error of your ways. That uh, you were the one that got mixed up. Um, again, I'm I'm preaching the same thing: repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 20. Okay. Um, that's what I preach. Okay, uh, Jesus Christ didn't come for the righteous. He came for sinners to bring them to repentance. All right, that's what I preach. That's what I've always preached. It isn't, O'Brien used to be good and he's changed over the years. I haven't changed. Okay, and if I have changed in some certain doctrines that I used to teach, I'll come out and I'll publicly say it. Look for the videos. I've done it. So that is going to be it. Please, uh, to the brethren out there, uh, watch out for these fakers um, that are preaching this this damnable heresy. Uh, and uh, when they when they come to you and they say, but it's it's faith alone in every dispensation, it's faith alone. 
All you need is the book. That's all you need. Three simple words, brethren, will get you out of a lot of debates, useless debates with these heretics. Chapter and verse. Three little words. Chapter and verse. The Bible says it's, it's by faith alone. Chapter and verse. Show it to me. Go ahead. Put it down there. 